Hi, I'm Izzy. Welcome back to the Gleason First Time Buyer Podcast. We've created this podcast to help you on your home ownership journey and we'll be covering everything from interior tips to finance advice and everything in between with some amazing guests joining us along the way. You'll be able to find our podcast on all the most common streaming services, but also on our YouTube channel, which you can find by searching Gleason Homes. For our 10th podcast, we're back with Justin from Meridian Mortgages, who is here to answer some frequently asked questions he has come across during his time as a mortgage advisor. We'll also be answering some questions which have been recently submitted on our Instagram and Facebook stories. So, welcome back, Justin. Thank you. Um, Could you introduce yourself to our new listeners, please? Uh, Certainly can. Uh, I'm Justin. I'm from Meridian Mortgages, and we are a Gleason's recommended mortgage brokers. We're new build mortgage specialists. And my role within the company is major account director, uh, looking after Gleason's. Perfect. So in this episode, we are going to be covering some frequently asked questions. And we recently did a story on our Instagram. Um, If any of our customers and followers have questions about mortgages, and they did, of course. So let's get into them. We've had a question from at Enya Robson, who is asking, what types of mortgages exist? Very broad question. That is a wide (laughs) question. Um, Summarise, maybe. (laughs) Okay, so if we look at um, if we look at mortgages uh, in terms of repayment, you've effectively got what is a capital and repayment mortgage. So, i.e., over the term of the mortgage, you're paying it off. Yep. uh, Against an interest only mortgage, where the balance stays the same all the way through. Right. Um, The majority of people now are capital repayment mortgages mm-hmm. that's certainly the way to way to go and then if you get into the different types of interest rates that are available um, we'll summarize those into fixed rates variable rates variable rates can change so where we've got um, where we've seen movement in the bank of england base rate recently um, payments will have increased if they were variable right. alongside that Whereas a fixed rate, uh, for a set period of time, the interest rate stays the same regardless of whatever happens in the marketplace and therefore your monthly repayments stay the same. Yep. So if you like the knowledge... It's a bit of a gamble, isn't it? <laughs> I think if you like the certainty of knowing, yeah. a bit like rent, you know what you're paying every month, yep. then the fixed rate is the way to go. Yeah. It gives you stability, stability of knowing what your monthly payments are each yeah. month. And that's really useful for budgeting, particularly for first-time buyers. Definitely. Um, We've had another question from um, an anonymous question. How is the amount you're allowed to borrow worked out? Historically, uh, it was worked out via income multiples. And so a lender would basically say, we will lend you X amount times your income. Yeah. Um, Traditionally, it used to be four, four and a half times a person's salary minus any committed outgoings like loans or credit cards. However, nowadays it's worked out via affordability. So each lender tends to have their own affordability calculator and it looks at what the customer's income is, what the outgoings are. Um, There's an element of um, living costs that go into it. They look at what kind of disposable income you have left from that. And then that then calculates into this is how much you can afford to borrow. Cool. Um, We've got another question, which I think we touched on in a previous episode. But for our listeners that haven't tuned in yet, at Laura Shooter has asked, how long does a mortgage in principle last? Yeah, so typically a a decision in principle or an agreement in principle will last for three months. Mm -hmm. Um, Lenders vary. Right. But, but typically it's going to be three to six months that that agreement in principle will will stand. Okay. I think it's important that if during that period of time something significant changes, whether it be income, debt, credit score, um, get in touch, let's let's relook at it. Yep. And is it is it as simple as kind of if there are external factors, why it's being delayed? It is a simple case of just getting in touch with Meridian Mortgages and you can just kind of do a new one. Yeah. Yeah, quite often we'll be able to just go in and update it. Yep. um, And um, that then extends the validity. Nice. Um, So a next question is from at Danny D8827, who is asking, when does your first mortgage payment come out? (sighs) 
What a good question. It's um, typically, it will normally be a couple of weeks after your completion date. Right. Every lender varies slightly. Um, the science of it is, is a little bit complicated to work out because depending upon what your completion date is, what date you've set for the direct debit, yep. um, then it will vary. So normally if you complete the back end of the month, mm. um, you'll find that within the first two weeks you've got a payment to make yep. um, before you then direct, your normal direct debit payments start to start to come out. And then can you change when it comes out? So during the, during the application process, the, as part of, of part of the application, the advisor will ask you which day of the month you want oh, okay. the payment to come out. Yep. If you find that that then doesn't suit, um, if it's before completion, come back to ourselves. Yep. If it's after completion, just contact the lender and, and yep. they'll change it. That's good. I think I would need to get mine to come out as soon as I get paid because if it's the yeah. <laughs> your first time buyer and it's the first kind of like big lump sum of money that comes out monthly, yeah. I need that to come out at the start because otherwise I'll get to the end of the month and I'll be like, oh, yeah. I forgot it's, about mortgage. It's one of those things, <laughs> as, you, as you come up to the completion date, yeah. you've got to be mindful that you're going to have these payments start to kick in. Right. And so... You know, it's making sure that you leave money in the bank yeah. so that, you know, it doesn't then come as a huge shock that yeah. you're not prepared for. It's kind of like the practice you've done of saving to a deposit, which yeah. you touched on, is now put in, into real play of making yeah. it all affordable. Yeah. And now you're going to have to start paying for it. Exactly. <laughs> Reality. <laughs> Um, so another question from at home with Abby has asked how do I go about remortgaging after five years to cover the help to buy equity loan okay so in all in terms of repaying the help to buy loan there is uh, an administration company that, that looks after that uh, a company called Target they have an application process customers will need to get a survey done on their house by a, a chartered surveyor Okay. And that uh, will determine what the value of the house is so that we know how much the, the 20% loan is. Yep. For ourselves, we've got uh, a retention team that look after those customers. Yep. So typically, let's say a customer took a fixed rate when they first bought the house. As that fixed rate's coming to a finish, we contact the customer to say, your fixed rate's coming to an end. Yeah. What are you looking to do? And and we've got lots of customers that are at that five-year period yeah. thinking about repaying the help to buy a loan. And our retention team will guide them through that. They'll help with the survey. They'll help with the the application side of things. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess this is just another example of why going through a, a mortgage broker like you guys is so much better than doing it. Yeah, it's just not just about that initial, yeah. how do I buy the house? It's looking after the customer throughout the journey, throughout the journey, um, and and putting the customer first. Definitely. So another question we've been asked is from someone who wants to be anonymous, um, asking how do mortgage offer extensions work? Okay, so um, a typical mortgage offer will last for six months. Right. Um, once you've been through that application process and they've issued the offer, valid for six months, and. One of the things where we work very closely with Gleason's is we keep in touch with regards to completion dates. Okay. So as we come up to that offer due to expire, we we contact yourselves. Is completion going to be on time? If not, what do we need to do? Right. Typically, most mortgage lenders now in the new build world um, will extend and extend for, a, for up to a further six months. Yeah. And we need to have a conversation with the customer of within the period of time, have any circumstances changed? No, it, any finance changes, um, any uh, job changes, that type of thing. And once we know that, we can go back to the lender. The lender will probably reach out to the valuer to make sure the valuer is still comfortable yep. with the valuation of the property. And then once they've got all the information thereafter, um, they, they'll extend it. Um, some lenders may require an up-to-date pay slip. Some lenders may re-credit score. So it's 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 kind of one of those things where you, know, you need to make sure you keep the... If you've got loans and credit cards, make sure you pay them, pay them yeah. on time. And if you're thinking about changing any circumstances again, 
come and talk to us. Yeah. Um, come and talk to us. Come and talk to us before you make that move. Yeah. Cool. And roughly how long, and I, I don't know if this is a, if there is an answer to this, but how long does it roughly take to extend your, extend your mortgage? Uh, like the process? Some lenders, it can be a couple of days, whereas other lenders, it might be a week, 10 days. It right. depends upon how much information they require. Yeah. Um, a lot of your, your big high street lenders have got processes in place where it's, it's signing a declaration to confirm that nothing's changed. Yeah. There's some bits they do behind the scenes in terms of the valuer and within a couple of days you've you've got the extension cool very good um so we've got another question from jade teeter who is asking can you transfer an existing mortgage over or do you need to get a new one yes you can (laughs) that simple (laughs) yeah no if you if you're an existing homeowner and you've got an existing mortgage um depending upon the terms and conditions of that mortgage when you took it out, um, you may well be able to port it over. Um, So again, part of the talking to the broker and getting the advice on it is, is that mortgage portable or not? Can, Can it be transferred over to the new house? And the advice element then comes in of going, is that the best thing to be doing? Right. Um, and so our, our guys can can talk customers through that. Yeah. But but ultimately, the majority of mortgages are portable. Yeah. Um, so if you move house, um, you can look to look to take it with you and cool. transfer it across. Perfect. And we just have two questions left. One um, from someone who's anonymous. What sort of things affect your credit score? This is a good question, and yeah. probably one I should have listened yeah. to before I got my <laughs> first home. Um. Probably the biggest thing is payment profile. Yeah. Um, so if you take out debts, make sure that you pay them, pay them on time. Yep. Um, if you've got a mobile phone, make sure it's on direct debit. Uh, people that you know don't have it on direct debit, that tends to be where it slips. Okay. Again, similar with credit cards, you know, they've got to phone the bank to make the payment. Yep. And if, you know, if they don't do that at the right time, it can impact that payment profile is showing as a either a late or a missed payment right so it's making sure that things like that they're set up on direct debit they're straight out the bank you don't need to worry about it yeah and making sure those payments are on time Mm -hmm. will will make sure that the credit score remains high It, it shows the lenders that actually you've taken a commitment on and you're actually being quite responsible with yeah. paying it back um so yeah that's that's probably the the biggest part. Um, the other thing is is don't get too many credit searches done. Right. Okay. Um, because that can it, it can affect a credit score in why you're having so many credit searches done. Mm-hmm. And probably the big one is the likes of um, you compare websites, your comparison websites, yeah. where you can go in and out of the various different deals, and sometimes each one of those will record a credit search right and so That's sneaky you end up with lots of lots of credit searches yeah. being done okay what would you have any advice for someone who may have done a soft credit search and they've seen that they have got quite a high so <clears throat> it's really good soft search because when when a lender does a soft search mm-hmm. when you look at your credit report you're going to be the only person that sees that Right. So a lend a, a lender looking at your credit file won't see that somebody somebody else has carried out a soft search. Okay. It's only if they do a hard footprint that they would then see that. Okay. Um, I, I think probably the 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 idea the ideal thing would be right at the very outset get a copy of your credit report, have a look what's on it, yep. and from there you can manage it. And if yep. there's something that's not good. Um, we can guide actually what yep. might still be available, what opportunities might be there, but also how d- how does it get made better? Yeah, perfect. And our last question is from at Chloe Holden, who is asking, can you get a mortgage when you have a new job? Possibly. 
Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe. Um, <laughs> it, it really depends. Right. Um, depends upon the job that the person is going in to do and um, the type of contract that it is. So, for example, is it a permanent contract? Is it maybe a fixed-term contract? Is it a zero-hour contract? Yep. So things like that matter um, because if it's a permanent contract, most lenders would probably be comfortable with that because there's no end date to it. Yeah. With the likes of zero hour or agency, yeah. there's no track record of earnings and therefore a lender might be less comfortable to do it unless yeah. unless you've got typically 12 months worth of experience in, in that type of contract. Yeah. Um, the other thing to look at is um, does the job come with a probationary period? I was literally just thinking that. That was going to be my next question. What if there's a probationary yeah. period? A lot of lenders are, are, are fairly comfortable with probationary periods mm -hmm. because they tend to be part of a standard employment contract nowadays. Yeah. Um, so, so a number of lenders are, are really comfortable with that. Um, but again, if you're thinking about changing jobs, come talk to us. Yeah. Get some advice on it. Um, yeah. before you really commit and because it's it's really part part of it is knowing that if we know about it we probably need to tell the mortgage lender yeah and it's better to get that advice up front before you put yourself in a situation where actually it, it could affect your purchase yep and I know I said last question but I feel like another question from at Isabel Buffin um what happens if you've got your mortgage, it's been accepted, and then you change jobs kind of before it's completed and you're in that process where you have it all accepted, but then you get a new job or it's in the very early stages of your mortgage. What happens? Is that okay? Or So again, through you know, if, you, if you're changing jobs anywhere between application and completion, there is the, there is the potential that the mortgage could be impacted. Right. Because um, again, it depends upon... You know, what job are you going into? Yeah. Um, the added part to it is, is there a change in income? Yeah. You know, Could be for benefit or for... Absolutely. If it's, if, if income goes up, yeah, fantastic. But adversely, if income goes down, then again, it may affect the amount that you wanted to borrow. Yeah. So again, it's one of those ones that when you're going through that thought process, yeah, take some advice on it first yep. um, before coming into it. Definitely. So I'm sure we've probably covered a lot of frequently asked questions. Um, are there any more common questions that you get asked that you want to share with us that we've maybe not touched on? Um, probably the biggest ones are all around the schemes. So right. the likes of help to buy, um, deposit unlock. Yeah. Um, and so probably recommend going back in if, you, if they've not listened to the previous episode. Yeah. Pick it up from there. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, lot, lots around help to buy how does it work yep and that, that's probably the most yeah most frequent which like I said we covered all in podcast nine so our previous podcast to go back and have a listen to so that concludes our last episode with justin thank you so much for joining me today on the gleason first time buyer podcast it's been great chatting to you thank you for having me we look forward to speaking to you again hopefully in the future about all things mortgages and have you back on the on the podcast look forward to it amazing Make sure you subscribe to our podcast on all the most common streaming services and also to follow us on Instagram at gleason.homes so you don't miss an episode. See you next week. Bye.